Military weapons programs often find it difficult to predict their true costs, from research and development to parts, material, and labor. Combined with inflation, it makes calculating the true costs of military programs quite difficult. Further complicating matters is that there's so much subcontracting in making military weapons nowadays that taxpayers may never know the real costs. Despite all this, one can still determine a pretty good estimate. To figure out how much a weapons program costs, you can divide it into two categories, the total program cost and then the total unit cost. The total program cost would be how much money was spent on a program from inception to service and then throughout retirement. Unit cost is the amount of money spent on research, development, constructing, and delivering one weapon system unit. For the purpose of this video, we'll look at the top 10 most expensive unit costs for military equipment currently in active service. Number 10. K2 Black Panther Tank During the 1990s, South Korea underwent major renovations to its military. Because the country had primarily operated hand-me-down Cold War equipment from the 1950s through the 1990s, the South Korean government wanted to update its military equipment to be on par with North Korea and enter the international arms market. However, there was just one problem. South Korea's domestic arms industry was minuscule at best. Because it had never fully researched and produced all its own weapon systems before, the South Korean industrial base was not equipped to handle the military's request to redesign a whole line of domestically produced tanks ships, small arms, and other equipment that the government wanted. Despite this, South Korean politicians pushed forward even though it became clear that the South Korean industry had some severe learning curves in developing modern military equipment. Perhaps nowhere else was this learning curve felt more than with its armored forces. In the 1990s, South Korea still fielded aging M48 tanks given to them in the 1950s. These tanks were better suited for a museum than a modern battlefield. As a result, Korean manufacturers had to design literally every system from scratch. Armor, fire control, countermeasures, ammunition, communication equipment, the engine, and so much more had to be designed and experimented with for the first time. It was the issues that the Koreans had with the engines in the K2 Black Panther that ultimately delayed the program for years. Because the domestically produced engines tended to cavitate, it took several trial batches of tanks for the government to give up on a truly domestically produced engine and partner with a German firm to help design the new engines. Because of all these delays, the K2 eventually cost a whopping $8.5 million per tank. Number 9. M1 Abrams Tank the M1 Abrams tank has been the mainstay of American armor dominance since the 1980s. Initially designed around the main battle tank concept, the goal of the Abrams was to create a one-sized-fits-all vehicle to eliminate other classes of tanks like medium and light tanks. Though this concept had been around since the 1960s and the Army had attempted this with the M60 tank, incorporating all the aspects that heavy, medium, and light tanks brought to the battlefield into one platform took decades to iron out completely. It was not until the Abrams that the Army finally found its dream vehicle. However, building a new generation of main battle tanks was not easy. In fact, the Abrams would have to incorporate a host of cutting-edge technologies never seen before. Part of that was its armor protection. Traditional armor on tanks at the time consisted of sloped steel armor plating combined with reactive explosive blocks. The engineering team that designed the Abrams wanted to try something different. First, they had to create a new, highly classified composite armor that would go around the outside. Next, they would have to design non-explosive reactive armor that they could sandwich between the other two plates. By creating this new armor system, the Abrams could practically defeat every type of high-explosive and anti-tank munition an enemy could throw at it. Combined with the armor developments, other features like countermeasures, communication suites, optics, and fire control systems all added to the huge cost in developing the tank. With these initial technologies, for fiscal year 1999, the U.S. spent about $6.21 million per tank. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $8.92 million in today's money. The cost of developing and maintaining the Abrams still remains high. Congressional budget projections released in 2021 estimate that the Abrams will eat up about 40% of the Army's armor budget for the next several decades as the service continues to upgrade it and develop newer models. Number 8. Leclerc Tank the Leclerc tank is the main battle tank of choice for the French and Emirati armies. While some estimates place the price tag of $30 million per vehicle, this is a little excessive. Part of the reason why the initial production runs of Leclerc was so high was because of how many years the French spent researching and developing a new main battle tank. With development starting in 1964, the first Leclerc tank did not roll off the production line until 1990. Part of the reason why there was so much development was not only because of design challenges in building a modern battle tank to defeat emerging technologies, but also in finding a suitable partner. 
One of the only ways the French government would allow the project to go through was if the military could find another government to assist in sharing the costs of the tank. After years of searching, the French government secured a contract with the UAE to roughly split the cost of developing the new tanks. Now, with plenty of Emirati cash, the production of the tank finally went into full swing in 1990, with a production run of just under 900 tanks. All the years of research and development that went into those first production run tanks made the costs of production very high. However, the French government released a more realistic number for what a Leclerc tank actually cost to produce just last year. To keep up with changing battlefield demands, the government ordered almost 300 tanks to be delivered by 2030 at around $15 million per unit. At almost $300 million, each new tank would cost about $15 million. Number 7. Trident II Missile The Trident II Missile is the Navy's part in the nuclear triad for nuclear deterrence on land, sea, and air. The Trident II is housed on the US and British guided missile submarines. Being the latest development in the family of Trident missiles spanning the earliest days of the Cold War, the Trident II came into existence starting in the late 1970s. At the time, Congress approached the military and told them they wanted a longer-range, more accurate nuclear ballistic missile. As part of the contract, Congress told the military to use as much competition as possible in procuring each component of the missile. Due to the large number of contractors making up each part of the missile, the cost inevitably went up. Another factor that made the cost go up was that the missile had an extended range with its new and improved three-stage launch system. The Trident II also incorporated new and improved navigation systems, combining celestial navigation from astronomical bodies along with inertial guidance. The missile is impervious to any attempts at jamming it since it calculates and self-corrects its own course internally in flight. Because of all these new developments, the missile comes in at about $30 million per missile. That does not include any of the modernization costs associated with ensuring the decades-old missiles remain viable. Number 6. Eurofighter Typhoon The best comparison that one can use to describe the Eurofighter Typhoon is that it's Europe's F-35. Started by the British in the early 1970s, the concept of the Typhoon was to create a fifth-generation fighter aircraft comparable to planes the US was producing. To help offset the cost of the aircraft, the British spearheaded the effort and roped in Italy, Spain, France, West Germany, and anyone else who wanted to participate. Because of all the different needs of each country combined with the reunification of Germany putting a hold on German funding for a few years, the development of the program was slow. For example, France demanded that the aircraft be capable of launching and recovering on aircraft carriers. When the other nations didn't agree, France withdrew from the project to develop its own aircraft. Since the Typhoon incorporated a host of new stealth technologies and other new developments, the cost began to become quite high. Combined with delays caused by years of bickering back and forth between the partner nations, the price tag ballooned from a low of 90 million euros to 160 million euros per aircraft. This cost is so high because it costs around $80,000 per hour to fly. Number 5. F-22 Raptor The F-22 Raptor was designed to replace the F-15 as the Air Force's primary fighter aircraft. Imagined in the early 1990s with the war on terror raging by the early 2000s, the US government canceled the remaining half of the F-22 order from about 400 aircraft to just 195. They did this because of finances and changing needs for the Air Force. At a unit cost of $150 million, the F-22's price balloons up to $334 million if the cost of research and development is factored into it. It was so expensive partly because of all the new technologies associated with it and not having any foreign backers. Unlike the F-35, Congress limited F-22 production solely for use by the US military. Because of this, the F-22 is legally prohibited from being sold to any foreign country, since many arms programs like the F-35 rely on money from foreign governments to offset their costs, the US taxpayers had to eat all the costs of this program. Another factor influencing the high unit costs is its cost to operate. At a mind-boggling $68,000 to fly per hour, the aircraft is only beaten out by the MV-22 Osprey and Air Force One. Number 4. F-35 Lightning The F-35 Lightning remains the overall most expensive weapons program in the history of mankind. At a price tag going into the trillions of dollars, the program intended to create a one-size-fits-all aircraft for the Air Force, Navy, and Marines, along with allied nations, and has ballooned well past any initial budgets. Why has been a source of political debate for decades? While there are many reasons why the three versions average out to about $120 million per aircraft now, initial costs for the first few production runs tittered around the $300 million range. 
Why the first few hundred F-35s were so expensive is because they absorbed years of research and development costs, along with production delays due to experimental technologies that conflicted with one another. Along with notorious issues with supply chain management and subcontractor problems, the F-35 also has a very high maintenance cost. Because only about 20% of the parts are shared between the A, B, and C models, the logistics for the plane are a nightmare. The initial cost savings that the military thought the plane would bring never materialized due to an ever-changing design and different requirements amongst all the stakeholders. Number 3. Seawolf Class Submarines because naval vessels are the most capital-intensive, it's no wonder why the remaining ones on this list are all ships and submarines. The Sea Wolf class of American fast attack submarines comes in at number 3 on the list. Originally designed to replace the Los Angeles class of subs, the Sea Wolf class came to counter Russian submarines. While most fast attack subs can take out a range of targets, from enemy shipping and warships to submarines, the Sea Wolf class was designed specifically to target enemy subs. As a result, the Seawolf class of subs are the most advanced in the US inventory and arguably the world. These submarines can supposedly dive deeper and faster than any submarine on the planet. They're also extremely quiet. Because of all these ultra-stealth technologies so classified that the US government has released almost nothing about them, it's no wonder that these boats cost so much. With an initial procurement cost of $2.4 billion per boat in the 1990s, adjusted for inflation, these cost almost $3 billion apiece today. Number 2. Triumphant class submarines. Like the Sea Wolf class of submarines, the French built their own sub hunter that also serves as the nation's sea based nuclear deterrent. The Triumphant class is almost as large as its U.S. counterpart, the Ohio class submarine. However, it also incorporates many of the same design concepts as the Sea Wolf class. With super classified sensors that can detect submarines 10 times more accurately than previous French submarines and being 1,000 times quieter, the Triumphant class submarine is a marvel of French naval architecture. It also costs a pretty penny. These boats, adjusted for inflation at the cost of 3.1 billion euros in 2009, come to about $3.5 billion today. Number 1. The Gerald R. Ford Class Carrier the Ford-class aircraft carriers are top of our list of the most expensive military equipment in service, with current estimates placing the price tag at a staggering $13.3 billion per ship. The carrier is the most expensive naval vessel ever built. It costs so much due to a combination of rushing emerging technologies, design changes, and testing failures that have made the price for this carrier skyrocket. The Ford-class carriers came into existence with good intentions. They were designed to cut down on the amount of crew needed to operate the ship and its integral nuclear power plant. The ships also were supposed to have an advanced set of arresting gears that put less stress on the airframes of the planes it launched, along with being faster to refuel, rearm, and relaunch aircraft in a combat environment. While all this sounded good on paper, it was different from what was expected in real life. Because construction of the ship was finished before a lot of the new systems, like the EMAL's arresting gear and the electromagnetic weapons elevators were finished, there was constant changes to the ship's structure and other systems that had to be done to accommodate some of these critical technologies. The testing with getting the flight deck certified to launch and recover aircraft also took years, suffering from the constant issues with the EMALs breaking down. Other technologies like the dual-band radar, meant to eliminate the plethora of radars typically on carriers, also did not work out as planned. Combined with these issues and literally thousands of other systems, structural and engineering changes had delayed the initial deployment until September 2022, when the ship finally left for her maiden deployment almost 13 years after her keel was first laid down.